Today I'll be solving the 16th challenge on Ethan Hawke called Preservation. This challenge is an interesting challenge that will test your understanding of delegate call. What is the objective of this challenge? Scroll down. The goal of this challenge is to claim ownership of the contract below, this contract. I'll copy this over to my code editor and deploy this challenge. Inside my code editor, I copied and pasted the code from Ethan Hawke. And again, the goal of this challenge is to claim ownership of the contract below. So if I click on the state variable called owner, it is set to message.sender when the contract is deployed. So the deployer of the contract is the owner of this contract. How else can we update this owner state variable? That is the challenge. If I scroll down further, I don't see any functions where we might be able to update this owner state variable. So to win this challenge, we'll need to come up with something a little bit more clever. What are the functions that are available inside this contract? There are two functions, set first time and set second time. Notice that in both cases, it is using a delegate call. So we might be able to exploit something using delegate call. And these two functions are also public functions without any restriction to who can call these functions. So these are the two functions that we'll be able to call. Let's take a look at what happens if we were to call the function set first time. It will call time zone one library, which is set inside the constructor. And then it delegates call to call the function set time signature. If I scroll up, set time signature is the function set time. So it's going to call time zone one library and call the function set time. If I scroll down, this is the library contract. I'm guessing that this is the time zone one library and maybe also the time zone to library. The function that will be executed will be this code, set time. Okay, when you're using delegate call, remember that this code will be executed inside here. So we need to be careful that when we're using delegate call, that we need to align storage variables. Notice here that this uint stored time is the first state variable, but if we scroll up, the first variable inside the preservation contract is time zone one library. What will happen if we call the function set first time? It will execute the function set time. It will execute this part of the code using the storage of preservation. Scrolling back down, it updates the first state variable and the first state variable inside the preservation contract is the address of the time zone one library. So what this means is that if we call the function set first time, it will update the address of time zone one library. So here, if we were to pass the address of our contract as uint, then we can update this time zone one library to our contract address. And then from there, we might be able to further do something to update the owner state variable. First, let's write some code where we will call the function set first time and then update the time zone one library to our contract. So I'll name this contract hack. And then I'll name the function that we're going to be calling called function attack. Here we'll pass in the address of the preservation contract below. And instead of passing the address of the preservation contract and inside the function loading it as an interface, what I mean here is address target and then saying preservation target is equal to preservation at the target. So here we're passing the address to the target contract as an input and inside the function we're loading the preservation interface. We can do this in one step. So here I'll declare it as preservation and remove this code. When we call this function, we'll pass in the address to the target and Solidity is smart enough to load the target address with the interface of preservation. This function will be external. And what we're going to do is call the function set first time and then for the uint timestamp, we'll pass the address of our contract as uint. Target dot set first time. We need to pass in a uint. We'll pass a uint of this contract address. So uint, and to cast the address of this contract as uint, we'll need to first make it into uint 160, cast the address as uint 160, and for the input of set first time, we need to pass it as uint 256. So we'll cast the uint 160 as uint 256. Okay, this part of the code will update the address of the time zone one library to the address of the hack contract. So next, how can we update the owner state variable? Well, if we call the function set first time again, the second time, time zone one library will be pointed to this hack contract. And inside here, it's going to call the function 
set time. So what this means is that if we write a function called set time inside here, we'll be able to execute any code. So I'll say function set time. It's going to take in a uint. This will be external. Okay, so the second time we called set first time on the preservation contract, it will execute the code inside here. So what is the code that we need to put inside here to update the owner state variable? We called that delegate call will execute the code inside here by using the state variables here. So what we can do is first copy the state variables. We're aligning the state variables so that they will be the same. And then inside this set time function, we want to say something like owner updated to the address that we pass in as input to set time. The input to the function set time is a uint. So let's say this is uint and to be clear, we'll name it underscore owner. And somehow we need to cast the owner input from uint into an address. What we can do is the reverse of this. So we first cast uint into uint 160, uint 160 underscore owner. Next, we cast uint 160 into an address. Address uint 160 owner. Okay, so to call this function, we'll need to call set first time again inside the attack function. So I'll copy this, paste it here. And the owner probably has to be the account that deployed the Ethernet challenge. So instead of setting the owner to the hack contract, we'll set it to message.sender, message.sender. And that should set the owner inside the preservation contract to our, let's do a quick check. We'll require that target.owner is equal to message.sender. Else, you'll say hack fail. Okay, that completes the hack contract. Let's now go deploy this using Remix. I copy the code from my code editor over to Remix. Let's try compiling this contract. Hit Control S and the contract compiles. So the next step is to deploy the hack contract. And to do that, let's first get the address of the preservation contract. Back inside Ethernet, I'll type F12 and this will pop open my browser console. And inside my browser console, I'll copy this address, instant address. This is the address of the challenge. And then I'll paste it into a Remix. Okay, let's now deploy the hack contract. Click on deployment tab. Make sure that we're connected to the Gorly testnet and click deploy. Confirm the transaction. The hack contract was deployed, so I'll scroll down and then open the hack contract. And we're gonna be calling the function hack, passing in the address of the preservation contract, which is over here. So I'll copy this. Paste it here and then call the function attack. Confirm the transaction. Okay, the transaction was successful. Inside the function attack, we checked that the owner is now set to our account, which is message.sender. So the final step is to go back to Ethernet and then submit our instance. If you've done everything correctly, then you'll see the button change to go to the next level. We've completed this challenge. See you in the next one.